Kyllä. Well, folks, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That was just Don and I showing how stubborn we can be with each other. And I can be just as stubborn as you. I told her I wasn't going to say anything. I was going to let her run the Bible study today. No. <laughs> He's the head honcho. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, it's good to be here with you. And I'm very thankful that God is in the midst of us and uh, helping us to grow and uh, be encouraged in the things of his kingdom and helping us to shed off the things of this world. And uh, each day is, is a day of joy and gladness and we're able to walk with him and allow him to speak to our hearts. And how good that is. Think about it. The, the work of the Holy Spirit is moment by moment. Uh, all throughout the day and the evening, the Holy Spirit. Isn't it good that Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit? How many of us would physically be able to be around Jesus to hear everything he said? Some of us would be out of earshot. There would be people trying to crowd in to, to see Jesus, and we might get pushed to the side. Um, Jesus might be speaking one direction and we're behind him and we wouldn't be able to hear anything he said. And physically, it'd be impossible for Jesus to shepherd his sheep. However, supernaturally, he shepherds his sheep through the Holy Spirit. And isn't it good that the Holy Spirit teaches us and guides us into all things and reminds us of all the things that Jesus has said and also expresses to us what the, the desire of, of the Father heart of God is? how good that is that we're able to have the Holy Spirit with us at all times. Hallelujah. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, we're here to study God's Word with the help of the Holy Spirit. And so let's pray. Father, thank you so much for sending the Holy Spirit, your promise, uh, to us to help us moment by moment all throughout the day. We pray that you would be glorified, Father God. Pray that, Lord Jesus, the words you have spoken and uh, given to us that they would come alive and make sense to us. And Holy Spirit, thank you for being our teacher and our guide. Help our hearts and minds to be open and available to you, um, to each of us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're getting close to Christmas, and um, I, I call it Jesus's birthday. Um, it's a time to celebrate God's great love manifested to us because of Jesus coming, uh, fully man, fully God, and being able to have the ability to, to die on the cross uh, and take the payment of death for all of our sins so that we didn't have to take that payment. But we now have a payment of everlasting life as we believe in Jesus Christ. Isn't it good? Hallelujah. I can remember my first Christmas after becoming a Christian and just the, the sense of peace and and hope that I had because of asking Jesus to be my Lord and Savior and how good that was. Do you have any thoughts today you'd like to share before we get started? Mm, I'm just trying to think. Um, I'm just thankful that um, the Lord <clears throat> continues to be in our life and show us different things and, and, and helps to minister and break things in us that um, sometimes we don't even understand or know that's upon us and um, just thinking back the last few months uh, probably before my birthday and and Josh Josh's birthday um, I was dealing with fear again and didn't realize that it was it was trying to really attach and um, one of it was the fear of death. And, and um, just this past week, I shared on Sunday, because our son John had shared with us that something about it, it, he was, um, the Lord had made this scripture come alive as far as honoring um, the 
commandment where it tells you to honor your mother and father so that your days may be long. And um, he, he shared with us that that was the Lord had showed him that, you know, when when we were moving over here, that was the main reason we moved was because you felt that um, the Lord was saying to fulfill a holy obligation and to honor your mother and father. Mm -hmm. And um, so he said that that was, you know, one of the only commandment with a promise that you'd have long life if you um, would honor your mother and father. And at that moment, what broke in my spirit was that fear of dying and not seeing grandkids, not being able to um, continue and, and move in what I felt like God was doing in my life. And uh, in, in that, with, with having that, um, it was like something was, that was a weight on me that I didn't even know it was a weight was just lifted and broken. And, and um, I realized, yeah, you know, and I realized in looking, cause we, we, as of August next year, we will have been here for 30, no, 31 years, It'll be 30 years at the church. Well, we, 92, it'll be 30 years that we have been here. And, and the Lord spoke to me, you know, about the time when Harry um, died in 2004 and the Lord brought him back. He said, see, you know, that was part of my, my promise to you of on, because you honored, you moved over here to nothing. You, you didn't know what you were coming into, but you were being obedient to me and you were honoring your folks that um, I am providing long life for you. And I stopped the hand of the enemy then. And he said, I'll continue to do it in your lives because you have been obedient in that portion uh, in, in what I've spoken to you to do. And it, it, it's been amazing to watch because, you know, year and a half after we were here, Harry's mom passed away unexpectedly. We didn't know she was going to have brain tumors and that she would be gone in a couple of months. And, and, and so that was, you know, we were here just in time for the kids to have, um, uh, to, to know their grandmother and, and to have um, time with her. And we were able to be here for her too during that time. And then, then in, uh, it was 2010 that Harry's father passed away or 2000, yeah, because mm -hmm. it was after mm -hmm. Josh had passed away, that, you know, we were, we were able to still have input in his life. And in fact, it was very comforting for me because his father came to the hospital when Harry was still in a coma. And he, he, he didn't say much, but he came and he put his arm around me and, and um, just sat you know, stood with me as we watched Harry because he was in a coma and I felt like, wow, <laughs> my dad's here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I had a dad there and, you know, his Harry's father was kind of on the gruffer side <laughs> and you never knew what <laughs> some of the things he was saying. It was like, oh, <laughs> the first thing he told me when I got on the phone with him um, and we were Harry had called and said that he was getting married. We were getting married. And he, he told me, do you know what you're getting yourself into? And I said, no, I'm going to find out. So I, I never knew how to take him. He was just very, um, I don't know, he, he just seemed rough. <laughs> so for him to come and, and put his arm around me was so comforting and so soft and gentle. And it just reminded me of the father our Father, our Heavenly Father. So there are things that God orchestrates in our lives, and and we may not see the immediate results. You know, we think when God tells us things that um, the answer is right there, but a lot of times it, it takes time, and, and, and there's um, waiting 
waiting on him and his timing and his his moving in our life and and so i i just see how god is so gracious and loving and and um good to us that he knows what to do in our lives in order to bring us to the points that we need to be and he 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 knows how to minister to us cuz he knows how we're made so you know i just really appreciated that when John said that, and and it was just such a um, a word, God spoke through my son the word, <laughs> and it was a word for me. And he said, "You don't need to fear. You don't need to fear what comes against you. That I'm going to allow you to have the number of days you need to have that I have ordained for you and destined for you. And illness, whatever, will not stop that. And I will bring you through this. And so." It, um, we can trust in our good God. He really is good, and he really does love us. And um, I guess that's it. <laughs> that's it, huh? I guess we're done with the Bible study. No. <laughs> uh, no, we still have 30 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's good for us to know that God's word is absolute, and we can always trust it. Uh, regardless of what the world says, regardless of what we see in our life at that moment, we can still trust God's word because he will always bring about what he sends his word to do in our lives. It will never return to him empty, but it'll be full of fruit. That's how powerful God's word is. Think about it. God created everything that's around us by simply speaking his word and it creation came into existence let there be light and there was light um, we have to realize that that same power that same creative power of god speaking his word is in his written word it's the same um, and when we read god's word we can trust what god says in his word because it's absolute he is all powerful hallelujah well, we're going to get into our study today, and it looks like we might be winding things down <laughs> in our study of First and Second Peter. We are in the, the book of Second Peter, chapter 3, and uh, in our Bible study, the Greater Than Gold Bible study, we are on page 14, and uh, we are looking at question 14. So, page 14, question 14. And uh, <clears throat> what it says here, the reference that Peter makes to our beloved brother Paul in verse 15 helps to discount the beliefs that Peter and Paul held different viewpoints concerning salvation by grace alone. And there would be some that would say that Peter had one way of looking at that and Paul had another way, but they both agreed that we're saved by grace, not by works and uh, that we're saved by the grace of Jesus Christ and the grace of God. And so um, the disciples and the apostles all agreed on that message. As a matter of fact, the reason for many of the letters being written in the New Testament was to um, uh, send a coordinated message by different people, different apostles, um, to the churches to make sure that they all understood the teachings of the disciples so that um, they understood what Jesus uh, had said. And uh, uh, we have the four Gospels that were sent out so that everybody could, could see the things that Jesus had done. Jew and Gentile, doesn't make any difference. The Gospels, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, have been sent worldwide throughout many generations so that all people could know the story of Jesus Christ and how God's love is expressed through him sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And so how wonderful it is that we have the power of God's word uh, for us today as we study his word. It's, to me, uh, exciting. It's, it's almost like um, unwrapping a Christmas present as we read the word of God. As we unfold it, unwrap it, unpackage it, uh, we're able to see things and we can stand back and go, wow, that's awesome, God. That's amazing that you have given us this promise, this hope that we can have. Praise God. So we are on question 14, and it says, What is the end result of the willful misinterpretation 
of Scripture. Verse 16 says, If anyone sees his brother committing a sin, uh, whoops, I'm in the wrong book. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> that would not be the right one, would it? Nope. <laughs> All right, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 16. We'll save that. That's for uh, our Bible study tonight with Pastor David and myself. Uh, <laughs> verse 16 says this, As also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some hard things to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. And so those that willfully uh, misinterpret uh, those that try to make a, uh, a um, doctrine, a false doctrine out of Scripture, uh, they're destroyed. Um, matter of fact, um, the book of Revelation says <clears throat> anybody adds to or takes away from this letter, um, they will end up in the lake of fire. And how important it is for us to rightly interpret, to rightly understand the word of God. And um, this brings up the whole um, subject of proof texting. And um, proof texting is, is where people will find a scripture and, uh, and read it and say, see, it says right here, this is what we're supposed to do. And they don't take the context of that verse, and they don't take the context of interpretation of what the rest of the Bible says about that specific thing. I'll give you an example. In the book of Ecclesiastes, um, Solomon is giving an argument for the pointlessness of life here, and uh, there's a statement he says, well, we might as well eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And it says that several times throughout the Bible. But the, the and, and, and people could take that and say, well, the Bible says, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die, so I might as well just party hardy. And, and they will take that, and I've had people literally say that to me. And then what I've done is I've helped them to say, well, that was the context. Do you understand the context of why that was being said? That was being said in a way of, um, it was basically a rhetorical statement it was made to say oh well i guess there's no point in living so we might as well do this and 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 when we say those things that doesn't mean it's true it just means that that's where faulty logic leads us to and so when solomon said that he was expressing what faulty logic says um, with hopelessness and uh, what we have to realize is at the end of the book of ecclesiastes he makes a statement that says it's it's best to serve God. It's best to obey God and how important that is. And so we've got to be careful with um, proof texting. Uh, another thing is, is what I call Bible dipping. It's where, um, okay, God, speak to me. So I open up the Bible. I, I, I close my eyes and I point to a scripture and, and okay, that must be God speaking to me. And God wants us to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Um, yet can God speak in that way? Sure he can. Um, God is God, but we have to realize that God wants us to study the word to show ourselves approved. That's what Paul said to Timothy. And how important that is for us to, to study the word of God, to understand it. Um, when I first started reading the word of God, there were there were. Uh, words there that I just didn't quite have a handle what that meant and I had a regular uh, dictionary beside my Bible so that I could look up those words and then I had a, a Bible dictionary to just understand some of the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic words that were there and that helped me to grow in understanding the words that were used in the Bible so that I could better understand what what that was say, saying and and now there's there are so many different translations out there that uh, can help us to to understand the Greek and Hebrew better of what the what the the meaning of that word really means, and how important it is for us to to study the Word of God so that we can be skillful in in handling it. That we can be, as the Bible says, a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed, and uh, it's important for us to whenever we hear somebody share doctrine 
uh, or listen to somebody, we need to understand that it's our job to make sure that what they're saying is true and right according to the Word of God. That's our job. Um, whether it's me or Dawn talking right now or Pastor David uh, when we get together tonight or a sermon that you hear or coming to church and listening to us, okay, does, does that line up with scriptures? It's our job to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. That will protect us from deception that is that is in the world today. Um, I just heard of a, um, a deception that's out there that Jesus has already come back and, and we are living in the millennium. Well, that's not true. It doesn't bear witness with the word of God. We need to understand what the scriptures say. There is a millennial reign, a thousand year reign of Jesus Christ where where the enemy is bound up and uh, cast aside. And there are people that say, well, that's where we're at. Matter of fact, there's there's some um, religions that say we are living in the millennial reign, and that's just not true. We don't see Jesus physically, literally here with our human eyes reigning in Jerusalem, which is one of the one of the protocols of the end times that that will take place is that he will be here, establish his throne in Jerusalem and be ruling and reigning from there. That has not happened yet, folks. And yet there are people that say that Jesus has already come back. Matter of fact, um, Peter and Paul both say that there will be people that say um, that he's already come back and, and, and they reassure the church that no, don't listen to them. That is false. When Jesus comes back, everybody will know that he has come back. And so it's important for us to know the scriptures and approve all things according to the scriptures. You know, Any thoughts? Yeah. The, the other thing I was thinking is that um, when we know the scripture, we're knowing more of God, but he's wanting us to know him too in an experiential and personal way so that we can... Um, understand how his character is and 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 discern spirits because that's part of this too is there's the spiritual realm that is coming against us that we can't see that is trying to influence our thinking and and god is saying no you need to back it up with my word but you also need to know because he'll lead us by peace because he's peace, so there'll, there'll be things that are in his character that he will um, show us and reveal to us and speak to us in because of who he is. So we need to know him and mm -hmm. his character because there are things that um, the enemy slips in just a little bit of truth, and, and so it makes it seem like it's okay. And that when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness... Satan tried to twist the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that if you're hungry, you know, uh, um, go ahead and, and uh, turn this, uh, you can believe for anything, go ahead and turn this rock into bread. And Jesus said, you don't live by, by food, but by all that proceeds out of the mouth of God, his word. Um, when he was taken to a pinnacle and he said, go ahead and throw yourself off. The Bible says that the angels will, will, will bury you up. And Jesus said, it also says to not test or tempt the Lord your God. And so we've got to realize the enemy is is um, able to take and manipulate the word of God he did it with and, Eve. and throw a half truth. Sure, he did it with Eve. That was the way she was deceived. Did God really say that when you touch the fruit, you would die? No, he said when you eat the fruit. And there's yeah. a big difference. Yeah. So knowing knowing how his character is too, you know, you can always um, tell. I I made up a chart years ago where it it has um, one is God's way and one is the world's way or Satan's way, and and one of the things is is um, with peace, and uh, if you're if you're feeling pushed and prodded. And and um, like all will fail if you don't do this, then more than likely it's the enemy because he comes in and he tries to. He's like a used car salesman. Boy, if you don't buy you, this yeah, right now, gonna, I got five other people no waiting other to chance, buy it. No other time. This yeah. is it. This is the pressure. This is yeah. And and God doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit is always a gentleman, and He's very. Um, 
And I'm not saying that all used car salesmen are like that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's very um, gentle with us. You know, he, he doesn't force us to do things. He doesn't make it seem like um, all is lost. He just kind of leads us and, and guides us and, and just nudges us and, and says, no, I, I don't think, <laughs> you know, you... It's part of our conscience. He comes in and he 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 helps us with our conscience and says, it, it, a "That's good example, not quite right what you're doing." Yeah, a good example is the shepherds in the Middle East. They they go before the sheep and the sheep follow them. They They're not behind them. the sheep, yeah. scaring them forward. And uh, what we have to realize is that the shepherd leads us. He draws us, and and it's always through relationship with him that he leads us and helps us to make good um, uh, choices um, by leading us. The Bible says that let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And, and so that, that right relationship, that peace with Christ, um, is to be the deciding factor for decisions that we make or even interpreting the Word of God. It's important for us. So the more we know Him, the more we can see when there's deceptions that come in. Even the slightest, you know... Um, um, I, I've talked to our kids at times and they've said, well, it just didn't feel right. There was something that was not right with this. Yeah. And that's the Holy Spirit. He's, he's trying to let you know, ah, be careful, yeah. be careful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I, I had somebody the other day ask me, well, I, I'm thinking about going to the Middle East. Should I, should I study the Quran? And I said, well, um, let me ask you this. Uh, what's more important for you, to know the real thing or to know the false thing? And I said, you know, if you know the real thing, you'll be able to discern and understand the false thing. And how important it is for us to um, give ourselves over to studying what is true and right. Um, I read years ago that um, the uh, FBI, uh, I believe it was the FBI, uh, or the treasury agents, I'm not sure exactly who, but the way that they know counterfeit is because they know the real thing. They handle, they study, they understand what legitimate real currency is. And they're able to tell the, the fake just by the feel, just by looking at it, they something's off with this. And it's because they've studied the real thing over and over and over again and go back and make sure that they stay calibrated with understanding what the what the real type of currency is and I think it's important for us to not get distracted by um, other religions uh, uh, other doctrines uh, we need to study those things that are right and true according to the Word of God to understand the doctrines that God has established for us to live and you might be going, well, what would be the doctrines? Well, um, that we need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that we need to allow his payment for sin to be a payment for our sins. That's a doctrine right there, salvation. Another one is is, is, the, is the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's a, another doctrine. And so there's numerous doctrines that are important for us to have as a basis, a foundation for our relationship with God and walking with him that that we all agree on. And that's what I said earlier is why these letters were sent to the church is so that they would have agreement in the foundational, the doctrinal things that they were to know and, and understand and be able to pass on from generation to generation. Well, let's move on here to the next question. What is the danger that Peter refers to in verse 17? This is number 15. Um, verse 17 says... Just lost my spot. <laughs> okay. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. So, um, well, uh, we could be carried away by the error of unprincipled men if we're not. That's the danger. If we're not on guard. Yep. And you'll notice they use the word steadfastness there. When we believe something, when we have been convinced in our spirit of that which is 
which is right and true. Uh, we need to hold on to that. That needs to be a very important part of who we are. And uh, there are people that would come along and say, oh, no, you got it all wrong. It's not like that. It's like this. And and uh, Peter was referring to that, that these false teachers would come and try to convince people to give up their steadfastness in the foundational scriptures of their relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, how important it is for us to be a people who who walk with God and know what he wants from us. And there are so many flavors of religions out there that may sound like they're good, uh, may look like they're good, but are they true to the word of God? And that's what we have to go on. And uh, I'm not here to name names of, of different religions, but but we need to make sure that there are some um, very important basis is in, in following God. And one of them is that the only way that we can have truth and life and the right way is through Jesus Christ. No other way. Um, Jesus himself said that I, he was the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. And how important that is for us. And yet there are religions out there that would like to say there's many ways to God. No, there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. And that there are many truths. No, there's only one truth, and Jesus is the truth. And how important it is for us to, to hold on to that. And there's only one way to have eternal life, and that's through what Jesus Christ has done on the cross mm -hmm. as payment for our sins. Yep. Shall we move on? It's the last one. Oh, man, the last <laughs> question. We are coming down to the wire here, folks. Um, question 16. Peter exhorts us to grow in two things in verse 18. And what are they? But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so there's uh, not just grace and knowledge, but grace and knowledge of our Lord uh, and Savior Jesus Christ. And so... How do we do that? How do we grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Uh, any thoughts on that, Dawn? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. You know, um, this is one of those those places where you see a word and the word, you think it just means one thing. You know, you don't you don't understand the depth of the word and and how God wants to unpack it and, and show us more and more in our lives how much more meaning this word has and that's grace you know until we until I went through all those difficult times when God showed up and was with us and showing me that he was um, in in the midst of these situations you know i had three made well i've had more than three but three major times since we've moved here with um harry dying in 2004 and the lord bringing him back and then our son in 2009 dying and um then um in 2014 our grandson josh joshy got leukemia and during those times, God started speaking to me about the grace. And, and um, you know, when Harry died, he, he, he said to me that I was experiencing his amazing grace. And then when our son Joshua died, and I was in a room with our daughter, and, and uh, a chaplain came in, and he was um, singing and, and ministering to those that were in the ICU, and he... And his group did amazing grace as I was standing there um, the Lord just had me have a quick vision of holding on to my son's hands and he was we were uh, the last verse when we've been there 10,000 years bright shining as a sun I saw my son with us and and in that that priest um, following days he spoke to me about his sustaining grace and he said, now you're going to experience my sustaining grace. There is more to grace than, than meets the eye or, or just the word. I want you to experience this now. And then um, when our grandson was in the hospital, he said, now you're going to experience my overcoming grace. And, and since then, he's given me more um, adjectives and more expressions of the grace that he has for me, a living grace. Um, uh, uh, 
triumphant grace, a faithful grace that he's always there. So there are things that he wants to show us in, in these words that we take for granted that we think are just a word. And he's saying, no, I am giving you something here that is so much more fuller and there are hidden things in this that I want to unwrap and show you that are a part of this that that make it even more fuller for your life because there is so much more to this grace. So as you grow in this and the knowledge of that grace, you, you start having more than just knowledge. You have an understanding and ability to, to see God's hand moving and being in that situation. That's his grace. It's more than just saving. It's more than just amazing. It's more than just, you know, all these adjectives that we try to, to give to the word uh, can't, <laughs> can't encompass all that grace is for us. And that grace was embodied in Jesus. And, and so there's so much more that God wants to reveal to us. And it's going to take us a lifetime or even <laughs> longer. I'm, I'm sure in heaven we're going to be learning things too. And wow, God, you're just so incredible. You know, there is so much more to, to God than we, and, and we take for granted. We, we don't delve into, we don't um, take the opportunities, we don't, see the hardships and the the hard times as as really times where he wants to show up in our lives and say hey i want you to experience me and my love in this now and and i think it's important for us to understand that there are things about god's grace and who he is that we can only learn when we walk through those difficult times um maybe you're listening and you're dealing with uh the loss of a loved one, um, especially during this Christmas season. And maybe this is your first year without them. And you're going, why did this have to happen? Why? And 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 it's very difficult for you. I, I want to encourage you that um, this is a time to draw close to God, not to push him away, but to draw close to God and say, God, help me to learn all that I need to learn through this situation. Help me to understand you better as you help me to deal with my grief and loss of a loved one at this time. And uh, we we need to do that in, in every situation. That helps us to stay teachable so that we can see the things of God. When, when our son Josh died and I was talking to the chaplain when he was letting me know that he had died, um, I had a split second choice when he told me that. And and my choice was, God, you are good. That's what I declared. And it kept me teachable and open to, to learn about the goodness of God, even in the midst of death, uh, a sudden death, a tragic death of, of my son in a, in a van accident in, in Oregon. And um, I had a choice at that moment to either say, God, I hate you for what you did, or God, you are good. There's goodness in this, and I'm going to look for it rather than anything the enemy would try to declare to me about how bad God is. God is not bad. God is good, and there's goodness even in tragedy that we need to look for. And and Peter here, you think about it. Um, Peter denied Christ three times on the night that Jesus was betrayed. Jesus told him, hey, this is what's going to happen before the rooster crows. You're going to deny, deny me three times. And Peter said, oh, I'll never do that. And yet that literally happened. And at that moment when Peter denied him the third time and the rooster crowed, Jesus, one of the gospels says, Jesus looked right at Peter. Now you think about the sense of failure and, and betrayal that Peter felt at that moment. It, the Bible says that he, he rushed out. He left quickly. And it was because of the grief of what he had done. Oh, Jesus said this was going to happen, and, and it has. And, and I told him it would never happen, and I failed him. And, and just that sense of failure and, and sense of, oh, God, how could you, Jesus, how could you ever trust me again? I, I have failed you in the worst way. And yet, the Bible says that Jesus appeared to Peter uh, separately 
and and I'm sure they had a talk. I'm sure that that John, Peter was was saying, "I have failed you. I'll I'll never be good enough." And Jesus was saying, "It's okay, Peter. It's okay, Peter. I extend to you my grace." And at that moment, there was grace that was extended to Peter, that that helped him to to not push Jesus away because of his own failure but to embrace him and and proclaim him wherever he went for the rest of his life to the point where uh, tradition tells us that when he was when he was crucified he was crucified upside down because he didn't want to 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 be crucified in the same way that Jesus was and and uh, you know there's there's just understanding that we're given about the lives of the disciples about how they grew because they embraced Jesus's grace in the midst of their failure. The Bible says that they all fled from him and that was to fulfill prophecy that that the sheep are scattered from the shepherd and and they all took off. The other thing that it says here is to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and um, I think one of the greatest things we can do is grow in the knowledge of who God is. Not to know about him, but to know him. Um, my wife and I know each other. Um, and because of that, I, there's times when I understand what she's going to say or, or how she wants me to respond sometimes. <laughs> At the beginning of this, that was kind of that whole thing, wasn't it? Yeah. But, but the thing is, is is I know her. I know her um, better than probably anybody else knows her. My kids know her, but not to the degree that I know her. And, and her parents knew her, but not to the degree that I, I know her. And uh, it would be much like this, is somebody walking up to you and saying, um, do you know about uh, Abraham Lincoln? Well, yeah, I know about him, but you don't know him. It, only if you live with that person and hear them and, and, and walk through life's experiences together, do you know that person? And the same thing is true with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is, is do we know about him or do we know him? Do we, do we push him away when we have struggles? Do we push him away when we're going through rough times? Do we push him away when we feel disappointed that he didn't do this or didn't do that for us? Or do we embrace him? Do we say, Jesus, I don't understand why this, this prayer didn't work. Why, why you didn't answer this prayer like I thought you would. And, and what we do is we, we let the Lord speak to us and help us to understand why he says no or wait to some of our prayer requests rather than saying, that's it, I'm never going to talk to God again. And I've had people that I've talked to say, oh, yeah, I tried the God thing once. I prayed and he, he didn't answer me, so I'm, I'm moving on to other things. And, and uh, what, a, what a waste, what a loss that they, they didn't pursue God uh, and draw near to him so that he would draw near to them. There's, there's a promise there in the word of God that, that's given to us about drawing near to him and he will draw near to us and 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 when we when we walk through rough times the enemy is right there to try to get us to to walk away from god to to no longer uh, love him or serve him and and uh, you and i both have experienced that uh, in times in our life where the enemy would try to come and say, that's it, just give up on God. He's, mm -hmm. he's not helping you. He's not, he's not doing what you asked him to do. And, and uh, what we have to realize is God is sovereign. And there's so much in play in our lives that God knows what's the very best for us and everybody that's connected with us, strangers, friends, and family alike. And how important it is to, to, to release to God his sovereignty, like Jesus did in saying, uh, Father, if it's possible that this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. Not once, not twice, but three times Jesus prayed that prayer. It was, it was a struggle for him. And if it was a struggle for Jesus, fully God and fully man in human form, how much more for us will we struggle with those things when we think we we have a handle on it. God, it needs to happen this way, and it doesn't. Um, and, and we can be upset, and we can be irritated, and, and be tempted by the enemy to walk away from the things of God. 
Uh, what a great closing to this letter that Peter says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, as much as uh, you had um, adjectives describing grace, I got a feeling that Peter had this long list of, um, there were things that Peter did. I, I uh, heard somebody once say that Peter had foot and mouth disease. He stuck his foot in his mouth quite a bit in, in things that he said. And uh, I, I've got a feeling that Peter has a long, long list of the different adjectives that describe grace in his life. And probably all of us do, you know, as we walk with the Lord. Um, it's important for us to, to grow in, in understanding uh, the wonderful grace that God gives us through Jesus Christ. And, it's, and also to grow in the knowledge of who he is for us and for the rest of the world. That's really <clears throat> the resource we use in sharing with others is as we, we don't have to be a theologian. Uh, we don't have to understand all doctrine. Uh, just simply your relationship with Jesus Christ is all God asks of us to share with others is, is to share the knowledge of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. And if you look through the Bible, that many times that was the testimony all throughout the gospels i once was blind but now i see you know i mean the the blind man basically i, I don't i don't know who he is but but i i was blind but now i'm healed his parents said yeah he's, he was blind from birth and talk to him he's the one that had it happen to him and how important it is for us to allow god to use our our knowledge of who he is what he's done for us to share that with others you have a unique testimony. You have an amazing resource uh, within you to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others around you because of what you have gone through and what God has done and what God has given to you in those tough times, in those hard times. Every one of us walk through tough times and hard times and, and being able to share with people, hey, let me tell you what God did for me when I walked through this. I... Um, I because of things I've walked through, I'm able to share with people about how God kept me and helped me to grow because of having a rough father, because of the difficulty and, and overcoming that and, and uh, just the things in my family and in our lives. And, and, but it's no worse or better than anybody else's. It's just what, what God has helped me to grow through. Uh, in every situation. Every one of us probably has lost a job. Every one of us has lost a loved one. Um, and yet we learn and grow in the knowledge and understanding of who God is. And that's what God wants us to share with other people is, let me tell you about my God, what he's done for me. And what he's done for me, he'll do for you too. And how important that is. Well, our time is up. We have the one last paragraph. Oh, we do, don't we? And then we're done with the Go study. Go ahead. You can read it, dear. In 2 Peter, the apostle tells us the best way to keep from falling and to be prepared for the coming of the Lord is to continue to grow spiritually in the Lord. This is apparent in the following verses, 1-5, giving all diligence, add to your faith, 1-10, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. 3-18 says, but grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And one last word. <laughs> okay. Um, part of this walk is trusting the Lord. And, and our daughter Katie had, I, I, I don't know, we're just into acronyms. <laughs> but she had been given, which is has been um, more alive to me, is for trust, T-R-U-S-T, totally relinquishing under sovereign timing and that's what this is we trust god to work out things in his timing we trust him we relinquish to him we don't fight against that and say no i don't want to do it this way no i i hate this no no and god is saying no just let go and that's part of the embracing embracing the lord and so trust mm. good word to close with and so uh, let's take time to pray. So Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you that you came and uh, loved us so much and showed us your love through Jesus Christ. And uh, as we embrace the grace, 
We embrace your forgiveness, Lord. We thank you that you help us to grow in who you are and who you are in our lives. And our brothers and sisters, um, I pray, Father, that you'll guide them and help them as they walk through these times uh, that we live in, Lord. Some are walking through a time of uh, wonderful blessing. And uh, may they enjoy that. May they see your goodness in that. And then there's others, Lord, that are walking through some real struggles. And, and may they, oh God, in a sense, appreciate um, your presence in the midst of this struggle, that you will keep them, you will guide them, that you're the great shepherd that, that uh, cares for his sheep and, and they are one of your sheep. Oh God, uh, bless them with the confidence of knowing that you've not forgotten them. You'll never leave them, you'll never forsake them, uh, but you'll guide them. And so Father, thank you so much for your word that you've written. Help us to find confidence hope and comfort and strength in it. We pray, we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, folks, have a blessed rest of the, the day. And uh, we'll be back tonight, uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, Pastor David and myself, we're still studying the the, the book of First John and uh, about ready to wrap that up, actually. And uh, we are we're thankful that you can join us, whether it's in the morning or in the evening. And one other reminder, just to remind you that uh, the month of December, we are not having a live Wednesday morning Bible study at the church. Um, we're taking a, a, a break from it because of just different things that are happening. And... Um, uh, but we are uh, going to start that back up in January. And uh, we are having Wednesday night boys and girls ministry at the church. And uh, that starts at what time? 6.30, I believe. And so at 6.30 at night, if you have children that you would like to bring and be a part of Royal Rangers or girls ministry, um, they'll have a blast. They'll learn some really cool things too. So God bless you folks. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.